Make us blessings upon you, Warden. You're the Grey Warden, aren't you? Exactly who I was hoping to meet. I represent a collective of mages interested in going about their lives without the constant scrutiny of the Chantry. Next to me, and in every major settlement, you will find an inconspicuous sack containing requests from mages all over the land who need the assistance of someone skillful and discreet. Thank you, my friend. We have agents in every major settlement to reward you for work done on behalf of the Collective. Make us smile upon you. My Valena returned. She told me of your daring rescue. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. Take this. A reward for your deed. It's dwarven made and should serve you well. Thank you again. I'm forever in your debt. You're welcome here, friend. What can I do for you? You're welcome to whatever I have, obviously. I'm at your service.
Those stung with a hundred arrows, those suffering from ailments both great and small, his heart was strong, and he moved on. Yes, what can I do for you? I knew this time would come. I should have listened to my wife. Don't sign that paper, she said. They might pay you a few sovereigns now, but they'll be back. Blast. I'll see you on the front lines, I suppose. I have finished. Make her help us. What will we do now?
family made it out of Lothring. If it isn't the hero of the day, what can I get you? Right, I've got some supplies too, in case you're interested. With the store closed down, it doesn't hurt to pick up some of the slack, eh? Darkspawn took Lothering, did they? I don't know. Make us blessings upon you, Wolf. the maker we need help they attack the wagon please help us follow me I'll take you to them
Couldn't we all just get along? No? See there? That's a trap. I would watch out for I use. Such fun! See there? That's a trap. I would wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Ah, so I am to be interrogated. Let me save you some time. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. An order of assassins, of course, out of Antiva. I suppose you wouldn't hear much of them out here, but where I come from, we're rather infamous. Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. I have no idea what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine. You threaten his power, yes? Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. Oh, well, that's between Loghain and the Crows, and between the Crows and myself. I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results, if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the Crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. I wasn't paid anything. The Crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a Chantry mouse, come to think of it. Being an Antivan crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. Well, aside from a distinct lack of ambition, I suppose it's because I wasn't given much of a choice. The crows bought me young. I was a bargain, too, or so I'm led to believe. But don't let my sad story influence you. The crows aren't so bad. They keep one well supplied. Wine, women, men... Whatever you happen to fancy. Though the whole severance package is garbage, let me tell you. If you're considering joining, I'd really think twice about it. You seem like a bright girl. I'm sure you have other options. Then, unless you're quite stuck on cutting my throat or something equally gruesome, perhaps you'd care to hear a proposal. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause, so let me serve you instead. Uh, 
To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? We could apparently use a swift kick in the head too, but you don't see me going around asking for one. A fine plan. But I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. Pigeon crap. Yes.
time for more dark spawn, I see. Rough travels out here, eh? We even saw dark spawn on the way in. Right, dark spawn. We killed a whole band of them on the way up from Lothering. We're delivering a message to the Chantry in Denerim. You? <laughs> I thought you said. Wait, you're serious? Uh, I suppose that's all right. As long as it gets there, stay safe.
Yes. Now that we're back at the camp, I want to talk about what happened at Redcliffe. You let Lady Isolde sacrifice herself with blood magic. How could you do that? She was grasping at straws. Of course she would sacrifice herself. She felt guilty for what happened. But there must have been another way. This is the Arl's wife we're talking about here. What do you think he'll say when we revive him? I just don't know how you could do it. How you could make that decision. I owe the Arl more than this. I don't know. I suppose it's done, isn't it? It'll have to be enough. Maybe I shouldn't be second-guessing you like this. It's easy to question when you're not the one making the decisions. And I've let you do just that, haven't I? Ah, oh, why am I getting on your back about it? You did what you had to. It's just... All this death... Never mind. Let's just stop there before I do more than shove my foot in my mouth like an idiot. You know, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I've something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But, after I became a Grey Warden, I did some checking and... Well, I found out she's still alive. In Denerim. No. I thought about writing her, but I never did. And then we were called down to Ostagar, and I never got the chance. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. Could we? I'd appreciate that. If something happened to her and I never went to at least see her, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Her name is Goldana, and I think she remarried but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then, well, it's worth a look. Here, look at this. 
Do you know what this is? Yes, absolutely. I'm trying to trick you. Is it working? Oh, I just about had you, didn't I? <laughs> I picked it in Lothering. I remember thinking, how could something so beautiful exist in a place with so much despair and ugliness? I probably should have left it alone, but I couldn't. The Darkspawn would come and their taint would just destroy it. So I've had it ever since. I thought that I might give it to you, actually. In a lot of ways, I think the same thing when I look at you. I'm glad you like it. I was just thinking, here I am doing all this complaining and you haven't exactly been having a good time of it yourself. You've had none of the good experience of being a Grey Warden since your joining. Not a word of thanks or congratulations. It's all been death and fighting and tragedy. I thought maybe I could say something. Tell you what a rare and wonderful thing you are to find amidst all this darkness. I'm glad you like it. Now, if we could move right on past this awkward, embarrassing stage and get right to the steamy bits, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Bluff called. Damn, she saw right through me. I'll be... <laughs> I'll be standing over here until the blushing stops. Just to be uh, safe. You know how it is. Your desire is my command. Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? You know, I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Given the circumstances, things could have been so much worse. I'm so grateful that you're you, instead of some other Grey Warden. Mm, that sounded better in my head. I, I just mean to say that I've really come to care about you. Now we just need to be rid of that pesky archdemon and everything will be back to normal, right? <laughs> Your desire is my command. Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? Join you? In your tent? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be nervous. It's, it's not like I don't want to. <clears throat> I must sound like a fool. You know that I've never done anything like this, with anyone. I was quite sheltered after all. I care for you so much. Whenever I think of this, I, I feel like a bumbling idiot, all hands. I wish I could be better at this. I want it to be right. With the darkspawn on our heels, death awaiting us at every turn? Sure, why not? Hot. <laughs> I don't know. I'm willing to give it a shot, if you are. Right, I'm going to stop talking now.
You know, according to all the sisters at the monastery, I should have been struck by lightning by now. Meaning it was so great that the Maker himself has decided to spare me the usual punishment, right? Yeah, right. Oh. You do realize the rest of our little party here is going to talk, right? They do that. Oh, sure, now you say that. By tomorrow, it'll be icy glares and awkward silences right before battle. Just you watch. So, what now? Where do we go from here? Right, I can handle that. I hope. Before we go, I just want to thank you. No one's ever made me feel this way. I wasn't sure it could happen, in fact. Good to know. You have excellent taste. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please, tell me. Oh, nothing so unusual and so interesting as you and your companions, I'm sure. Dwarven merchants are common enough on these roads, aren't they? I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. I await your command. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes, by Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more.
they came with as much swagger and arrogance as they did self-righteousness. Pity them if you wish, for they held none for us. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait. <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Sometimes, eventually. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. There are only absolutes, so only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, tis this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? <laughs> An enlightened view, or at least an agreeable one. Enough of this talk. Let us return to the task at hand. You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is unexpected. You sound surprised. You must have heard this before. You'll get over it, eventually. I was sent to be the eyes of the Antom. The Arishok asked, what is the Blight? By his curiosity, I am now here. Yes. I cannot go home. It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the Darkspawn waiting. Does it matter? Very well. I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. That is complicated. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. I am told no others survived. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead. Nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers. And my sword was gone from my hand. I searched for it. And when that failed, I asked my rescuers what had become of it. They said they found me with nothing. I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. Do your people have no souls as we know them? Convenient for you. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter unarmed and alone to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. Near Lake Callanhad. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. <laughs> Thank you.
I must say that traveling with you has opened my eyes to how wrong some are about the Dalish. You are not at all savage, and I've not seen you snatch away women and children without provocation. If my people were more open to interacting with yours, we could do away with such misperceptions. I hear many city folk talk about how wonderful it must be to live simpler lives, close to the earth. They could learn from the Dalish. How marvelous that must be. I have met very few elves, and those that I have met were pledged to the service of Orlesian nobles. <coughs> They are serfs. There is no slavery in Norway. Elven servants are well compensated for their services. Some of them live richer lives than humans. A well-trained elven servant is highly valued in Norway. They are nimble and dexterous, and many people find them pleasing to look at. No, I did not mean it that way. Oh, my words were clumsily chosen. I did not mean to offend. I... Ugh, I am sorry. Of course, I am sorry if I implied otherwise. Thank you, you have given me a lot to think about. I've a question, if I may. Well, here's the thing. I swore an oath to serve, yes? And I understand the quest you're on, and this is all very fine and well. My question pertains to what you intend to do with me once this business is over with, as a point of curiosity. Oh, I imply nothing specific, of course. One simply assumes that once your Grey Warden business is finished, you would have no need of an assassin to follow you about. Am I wrong? Indeed. Mm. I might even be glad to call myself such, come to think of it. It is good to know what my options might be, but that is for another time. For now, we have much to do, yes? <laughs> 